Anyway, I just wanted to share something this morning, but as I, uh, I was preparing for the message this week, I, I really thought about kind of um, um, really two people in the Bible that are just really such a, a motivation and an inspiration um, it, when it comes to really doing God's will in the earth, and um, I think of Joshua and Caleb and how that they walked with Moses and heard about the promised land and and they were on that 40 year journey that should have took them 11 days and and they were there and they heard about the promises of God and and you know at one point the bible says that God uh, spoke to Moses and he sent in 10 spies and spy out the land how many remember that story right and they came back and uh, uh, they came back with an evil report some of them came back with an evil report and uh, how many know there was just one report that was good and everything? But, you know, there's something about Joshua and Caleb. I believe it's in Numbers that the Bible says that, you know, they, they had another spirit. <laughs> I love that scripture about them. It just wasn't these guys that just had vision, but they had another spirit about them. When everybody else was complaining and everybody else was talking about what was bad in the promised land, they had another spirit. They saw God's work. They saw God building something great. They saw the hand of the Lord moving and, and clearing out the way for them. How many know what I'm talking about? They had another spirit. And I don't know about you this morning, but I want to be a, a Christian that has another spirit in all, 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 all culture. That I'm just not like swallowed up by fear and, and, and all kinds of things, but there's just another idea that... We're, we're thinking about God's heart. Come on, we're thinking God's thoughts. And, and we're seeing a bigger picture. How many of you I'm talking about? We're seeing God's picture in our culture today. And I want to have that spirit and that heart. And so today I just want to encourage you. Man, when you hear negative reports and you, everybody just talks about what all the bad things that are going on, I want you to have that spirit of Joshua and Caleb that we're well able to go up and take the land. That God's going to do what He wants to do. And His will is going to be accomplished in the earth. How many believe that? Amen. All right. So like uh, Brother John said last week, the faithful four, they're here today and uh, said amen. That's great. Anyways, uh, we had such a great time with the first last week. How many heard that message? Uh, really just fulfilling that fulfilling of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the fulfillment of, of God in our lives. And it's just su such a great thing how um, the Lord is moving. And so we're so uh, appreciative of the first coming and kind of a, a it was a last minute, but just I heard they were coming, and so I was like, yep, we're going to schedule, you're going to speak, and so I'm so thankful for that. If you hadn't heard that message, or just go ahead to our YouTube channel or Facebook and just listen to that message. You'll be really, really encouraged. Amen. <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, I talked about uh, really God's will in the earth and, and the will of God and doing the will of God, and, and uh, I don't know if you remember that message or whatever, but it was just talked about God's will in the earth, and, uh, and I just wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up this morning uh, on something else, and um, uh, uh, kind of along that line, but um, how many know that um, really, if you've, you've come into our lobby and you, you've read some of those signs out there, you've seen that really our vision is to, to, uh, to love God, to love one another, to grow in our faith and reach our world. So grow is so important. Growing in our faith is such an important part of the vision here in our church and, and really just everything we do and the activities we do is to really help you grow in your faith and encourage you in your faith. And so I want to encourage you this morning and some things that help you grow in your faith. Is that all right? Just want to help you um, kind of grow there a little bit and, and uh, just by God's word this morning. So if you just turn with me to John chapter 10. In John chapter 10, Jesus is speaking and he's uh, really kind of giving a great picture of himself and our relationship with him and who we are. And um, so in John chapter 10, starting in verse 2, <clears throat> he begins to um, talk about the gate and the sheepfold and, the, and the, he was the door and he's the shepherd. But in verse 2 he says, uh, Jesus said, but whoever enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And to him that uh, the, the porter opens or the gatekeeper opens and, and the sheep hear his voice or the shepherd's voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out of that place. And when he, uh, he puts forth his, uh, his own sheep, the Bible says that those that are, he owns those sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. In verse 9, it says, Jesus said, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. And he'll go, he'll go in and he'll go out and he'll find pasture. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life, lays his life down for the sheep. And then in verse 27, he says this. He says, my sheep 
hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. How many know that he is the great shepherd? Amen. I love this passage of scripture because it says that Jesus is the gate. That you can't get to heaven or through the, to the Father except through Jesus Christ. He is the gatekeeper and he is, uh, he's the one that opens the door, the Bible says. And I believe that he's opened the door of salvation on the cross. But then it says that he is the good shepherd. And he gives this picture of how a shepherd works. And that there's this sheep pen and that's where the sheep are. And then he stands at that gate. And he begins to call them out by name. And he begins to name them and begins to call them. And they begin to come out of this gate. And then they begin, he goes in front of them and he leaves them. And he hears their, they hear their voice, his voice, and he leads them. So they're led by his voice. They're led by his call. And then they're led by his voice. And so I believe... um, that we're really living in a, in a, a time that we need to be a little bit more intentional as Christians about the way that we're going and who we're following and the voices that we're listening to. Hello. Amen. In, in fact, the Bible says in the last day, it's very important that we're listening to the right voices in these days. Come on. The Bible says there's going to be a lot of voices in the last day. But how many know there's only one voice we need to be listening to? That is the great shepherd. Amen. And so he's leading us by his voice, the Bible says here. How many know what the voice of the Lord is, plainly? It is the Word of God. <laughs> I'm just, that, that's a rhetorical question. I'm just going to tell you, it is, when we say we're being led by his voice, that's not some mystical wind. That is the Word of God. How many know we're led by the Word of God? Amen. How many know the Lord is speaking through his Word today? God's speaking through, so that's what he's really talking about. And Jesus goes on and says that there's some shepherds that they're not, don't follow them. And, 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 and there's people that try to come in another way. Don't, don't pay attention to them. They're, they're not the great shepherd. He said, I'm the great shepherd. And you hear my voice. And when you hear my voice, you need to follow me. How many recognize the voice of the Lord? How many have ever heard God speak to you? Amen. Well, let me just put it this way. How many have read the Bible this week and you knew God was speaking to you? Amen. Well, that's the voice of the Lord. But I want to just talk to you this morning about when we hear his voice, we need to go his way. It's all about going God's way, isn't it? How many know God has a glorious day for the church? He's got good days for you. He's got promises for you. How many know you're not going to get there any other way but following his way? You're not going to go there your own way. You're going to go there God's way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so I believe that in this day, in this, this right now, this time for us, that we really need to be careful that we really hear the voice of God and that we follow after the, the Lord. Come on. But we're also going His way. How many, when you got saved, realized that I'm not going my own way anymore, I'm going God's way? How many made that decision in your heart a long time ago? I'm going your way, God, and I don't care what really happens along this way, I'm just going to stay with you. Amen. Right? And how many are thankful that along this journey, God's been with you the whole time? Amen. But you know, we just need to say in our hearts in this culture that we're not going to turn to the left. We're not going to turn to the right. We're going to go God's way. The Bible says that broad is the way that leads to destruction. And a lot of people are going that way, but we're going a different way. We're going God's way. How many know a lot of things that are going on in our culture, amen, uh, not necessarily right or God's way. And we've got to make a stand. And we've got to say, you know, sometimes we've just got to say, I don't know about what everybody else is going to do, but like Joshua, as me and my house, we're going to serve God. For me and my heart, I'm going to go God's way. I don't care if the world says it's, this is the way of science, or this is the way if I feel this way, or this is the way the culture's going. Now we need to keep, teach our kids this way because that's what culture's doing. How many know we're going to go God's way? Amen? And so we need to have that in our heart. I love this scripture in Psalms chapter 37. It says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. And so I believe that we need to be intentional and strong in the direction that God has called us today in this hour at the, as the church. I believe that we need to be uh, strong in that. The Bible says that if we'll fully obey what God told us to do, we're going to walk His way. And we're going to walk in His blessing and His protection. How many of you know, amen, we need to walk in the protection of the Lord, amen, these days, amen. We need God's protection over our children and over our homes and our families, Amen. How many believe that? And so if we go God's way, we're going to know God's will for our lives. We're going to fulfill God's will for our lives. Amen. And so this morning, I just want to talk to you about hearing God's voice and going His way. 
And I just want to point this out, that you'll see this all through Scripture. We'll just follow the Scriptures. If you go from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you'll see that God is constantly leading His people in difficult times. Constantly leading them through uh, hard circumstances and leading them to a place of rest and victory and promise. Amen. And so, how many know it's no different today? God's still leading us as people. He's still bringing us by a way. But how many know it's not our way? It's not the way that we think it should be. It's not the way that the culture wants it to be. It's God's way. How many know God's way sometimes goes against the way of the culture. How many know the system of this world is not the system of our Lord in Christ? Amen. That's just not going His way. But when we go God's way, we find so many things that God has promised. And, and I believe that they're just no different than when Abraham was walking or when, when David was going God's way in his culture, when Daniel had to stand for God's way in his culture. I believe it's the same thing. How many believe that? Same kind of spirit today. Same decision making today. Amen. And so... We encourage you about going God's way today. And so I believe that God is taking us really to this journey and on this way, but we can't do it any old way. We've got to do it God's way. In your life, in your business, in your marriage, in your, in your heart, you've got to do it God's way. There's so, many, uh, so much information today and so many how-tos and there's so many instructional videos about do this and do this and there's so much teaching today. Is that right? Right? And just get online and you can get all kinds of information and, and instruction today. But overall, amen, it's all about going God's way. That's what we're all about, is going God's way. And so I want to encourage you today, and in marriage and in your life or whatever, just pray. Say, Lord, I just want to go your way. Amen? I want my marriage to go your way. I want my business to go your way. I want my, my, my home and, and, and our city. We want, we want God's way and God's will to be done. And so I want to go... God's way. One of the things I love about Jesus is there's so many tremendous examples in his life that we can see in the scriptures all the time. And one of the examples that I see about Jesus is how that he intentionally walked according to his father's way. He didn't divert or he didn't go his own way. He said, everything I do and say, I see the father do. It's his way. Amen. Come on. How many know that Satan tempted Jesus and offered him Amen. He offered him glory. He offered him position. He offered him power. How many know it was three years early? The devil always comes a little bit early to try to get you away from God's way. <laughs> so the devil came to tempt Jesus and said, you don't have to go God's way. You can go another way. Go my way. I'll get you there quicker. But how many know Jesus knew there was only one way to go and that was through the cross? That was only through conviction, or the crucifixion. And so Jesus had to go through that way of crucifixion because that was God's way. Amen. And Satan offered him three years before that, offered him another way. But Jesus, the Bible says, set his face like a flint to do the Father's will. And I'm so glad he did because he made a way for me to be saved. Amen. So that I can know God's way. And so it's important to look at Jesus and, and know that he was completely submitted to the Father's way. All his life was about going God's way, doing things God's way, how God would want it to be done, how the Lord wants me to do things. How many are praying right now about a situation in your life and you say, Lord, how do you want me to do this? Lord, I don't know really kind of what to do, but Lord, I, how do you want me to do this? How do I approach this situation? What about my future? What about the decisions I need to make? I need to go your way. I want to know the, the path that you want me to take here. How many know the Bible says that the steps of the godly are ordered of the Lord? How many believe that with all your heart? So guess what? We need to pray, Lord, to reveal those steps to me. Show me those steps. Lead me by your spirit. The Bible says that we can make our plans, but the Lord will have the outcome ultimately. Amen? And so I'm going to go God's way. And it's so important that we raise our kids this way. It's God's way. Amen? And there's so many ways that we could go. The Bible says that there's a way that seems right to somebody, to each person. But without God, the end of that way is death. Right? There's a way that seems right about everything. But we want to go God's way. Amen? And I love that because really about going God's way, I thought, Lord, what does it really take about, uh, what would it take to go your way? In the Christian life, what does it take? And I believe there's two simple words. Number one, obedience. Number two, faithfulness. To go God's way. How many know that it takes obedience and faithfulness to go God's way? Amen. To do His will. 
And that's what, that's what the life of a Christian is about. It's just that walk of obedience and that walk of faith and that walk of consistency and faithfulness. And I believe that our world and our culture around us needs to see Christians who are obedient to the Father's will and going God's way. Amen. And so I believe that's a tremendous uh, example and testimony to the world. I just want to get in this today. I want to share with you three directions that God gives us that we need to understand about His way. Three directions. You know, there's three words or three directional words that God gives us in our lives, and I want to share those with you. How many know the first one is go? How many of you ever heard the Lord say go? How many love when God says go? How many love that? I do. My wife will tell you I love when God says go. And I, I prayed for a building for a youth center for 15 years. And I mean, I'm laying hands on all kinds of buildings around the city. I'm, I'm dreaming, I'm scheming, I've got all kinds of ideas and stuff. Amen. But God didn't say go. But the day that God said go, I was like, I mean, I was, I was already there. I was like 15 years ago, I was there. But you know, when God says go, it can be a powerful thing when we obey. You know, God will tell you to go. How many know you need to obey when God says go? Because here's the key. Obedience is the key to any direction or purpose that God has for you. Obedience opens that door that God, when God says go, that gives you that kind of that liberty to take that step of faith to go. And so this morning, God may be speaking to some of you. You're praying, you know, about a situation and God's saying this morning, you need to go. How many of the Lord says, it's time to go? How many have ever heard the Lord say, you've been here long enough, it's time to go? You ever heard that? of the Lord. And everybody's like, well, God tells me to go all the time. Well, he doesn't tell me to go all the time. So I know he doesn't tell you to go all the time. But I just wanted to say this about this, that when God says go, there is such power, there is such grace, there is such blessing in the way that God opens up for you, the doors that he opens up for you when he says go. How many have ever just had a door open up for you, an opportunity open up? It was so wide, you were like, I mean, this is God. <laughs> How many have ever heard the Lord just say, there it is. Go. Walk in it. Amen. And God tells us go. And we need to learn to hear God say go. God wants us to, to, to understand that the word go means to change. Get moving. To act on something. To respond to something. To step out in faith. God told Abraham to go to a new land. God told Moses to go back to where he came from to deliver a people out of Egypt. God told Elisha, go and anoint the next prophet. God told Jonah, go down and preach and extend my mercy to Nineveh. God told Peter, go and teach the, uh, uh, and reach a whole entire new people group with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Lord told Jesus, uh, you know, I believe his father said, amen, it's time to go. It's time to go to the cross. Remember when Jesus said, I've got to go to Jerusalem, it's time to go. And I love this about Jesus. I love when Jesus said, it's necessary that I go away. <laughs> Aren't you glad that Jesus, amen, uh, ascended? And the Bible says that when he said, I ascended, the Holy Ghost came down. And amen. And that's when they made possible that we can be alive in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Jesus said, I've got to go. It's necessary that I go. But he said, I'll be back. <laughs> I love that about Jesus. He said, I got to go, but I'll be back. Amen. And so when God says go, you've got to obey. You've got to go. You know, we see in the Old Testament the cloud and the pillar of fire, the cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night in the wilderness. It was to keep the children of Israel going, amen, in the way of the Lord. It was to keep them from getting unthankful and stagnant and lost, amen. How many know are thankful for the way God leads you, amen. And when God, the Bible says that there would be times that they had to camp and settle down and make sacrifice, but when the cloud started to move, they had to roll up their tent, they had to pack everything up, and they had to follow the cloud. It was time to go, amen. Come on. And like Moses said, I don't want to be here unless you're going to be here. And I don't want to stay here if you're not moving. Right? If you're moving, Lord, and you're going somewhere, that's where I want to be. Amen. How many want to be where God is? And so we got to understand that God says to us, and he tell, He'll tell us in our Christian walk, go. Amen. And Jesus said to all of us, he said, go into all the world. He gave us that word, word go. But you know, how many know that going isn't always easy? Going isn't always easy. 
It wasn't easy for Abraham. It wasn't easy uh, for, for Moses and the children of Israel all the time. It wasn't easy for Jesus to go. It wasn't easy for Peter to go on those mission trips and Paul to go, amen, and preach the gospel. Sometimes going isn't always easy. You hear the Lord say, go, and you're like, yes, but. How many have ever had that conversation with God? And the Lord just says, you just need to go. <laughs> you just need to get. In Psalms chapter 32, in 8 and 9, it says, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway in your life. I will advise you. I will watch over you. Do not be like the senseless horse or mule that need a bit or bridle to keep them under control. Always be willing to go. Amen. And so, how many know it's not easy to hear the Lord say go sometimes? It's not easy to pack up things or say goodbye to things or change things. It's not easy. But nevertheless, we'll walk in His blessing if we obey the word go. Amen. And you know, some people are just plain miserable because they didn't go. <laughs> God told them to do something. They didn't do it. And how many know it's just miserable? How many have ever been there? Come on, somebody. How many honest Christians do we have in the room today? God said to do something. You didn't do it. And you were miserable. Right? And sometimes going isn't easy, but it's always the best. God's way is always the best way. And one of the things I've learned about when God says go is don't run ahead of God. Don't get ahead of God's plan for your life. Don't try to step, skip steps and put the cart before the horse or whatever. Just go in the way that God wants you to go. Go according to His principles. Come on, somebody. How many know God will always lead you by His principles? Not your feelings, not the situation around you. He's always going to lead you by His principles. So don't, don't, don't get ahead of God when God says go. Amen. Just go in His timing. Just go in His way. Let the Lord open up things for you. Let the Lord just kind of develop the plans and just kind of take steps according to your, come on, according to faith and prayer. And just, I found that that's just how I go. Lord, I just, I, you know, for me, and, and everybody will tell you, I'm the person, I'm going to run ahead. That's me. I'm going to run ahead. It's like, okay, this is where we're going. There we go. Let's go, right? How many have ever been like that? You want to run ahead of God and you want to get ahead of the game and God says, I'm going to use you in this capacity and the next thing you know, you're packing your bag. And your wife's like, where are you going? Well, God's going to use me. Well, no, you're running ahead of God. Amen? And so we don't want to do that. And so the direction of go or that instruction from the Lord to go means three things. It means to trust the Lord. You've got to put your trust in the Lord. When God says to go and I want you to do this and do that, you've got to put your trust in the Lord. Amen? How many know it takes courage? It takes that step of faith. It takes that obedient action. It takes that, Lord, I'm just going to get outside my comfort zone and I'm going to have courage. Amen. And I believe that the Lord meets us when we take that step of courage and that step of faith. Amen. When we overcome our fear and our doubt and the unseen. I mean, that's what faith is. Stepping out on the unseen. Amen. Believing what you can't see or feel, but trusting the Lord anyways. And so that instruction of go is so important, isn't it? And then I find out that there's a, a second really instruction um, or direction the Lord gives us when we go His way, and that is to grow. Amen? Yeah, these rhyme. Amen. So it's to grow. And I, I know that we talked about it earlier, but the Word of God really has helped what we grow through. We don't just grow through listening to sermons, and we don't just grow through worship music, and we don't just grow by being, coming to church or just hanging out with Christians. How many know you've got to grow by the Word of God? Right? And we grow by the Word of God. And so the Word of God keeps us from becoming lukewarm and indifferent. The Word of God keeps our hearts stoked. The Word of God keeps our hearts, amen, always that, that freshness in our hearts. Because the, the Bible says the Word is the seed. And so it kind of keeps our heart open and cultivated before the Lord. And, you know, I know a lot of Christians that view maturity in the Lord or growth in the Lord like, like riches in the natural. Like the more rich you become, the more of a snob you become, the more entitled you become. And so you think, oh, man, the more mature I become in God, the less I need to talk to other people in church and the more, uh, the more I need... No, no, that's not how it works. Amen? How I many know as, a, as a, a one that's growing, you got to keep learning. You're, you're a disciple for life. You're, you're walking with the Lord. You're learning new things. You're discovering new things. It's constantly growing in your faith. How many can say, I've been saved for a long time, but I still need to grow and develop? Amen? So that's what it is in growing. And so the Lord's going to take you in this direction, and He's going to say, it's time to grow. How many know, I like that saying that what you go through grows you? Amen? And God's all about growing our faith and growing in our faith. And there's just a couple things I want to just share about that that's very important about growing in your faith. And that is, number one, you've got to grow on your own. 
You've got to take your responsibility on growing your, on your own. Come on, amen. I think a lot of t- times people say, well, you know, I'm not, just, I'm not being fed at church, or I'm not being fed at that church, or I'm not getting anything out of that church, or, or those sermons. But how many know we just kind of assume that it's somebody else's responsibility to feed us all the time? But how many know we've got to grow on our own? The Bible says, add to your faith. Add to your faith. You've got to grow on your own. You've got to open the word. You've got to speak to God. You've got to step out of the boat on your own. Come on, somebody. You've got to grow in faith. You've got to allow your circumstances to speak growth into your life. Amen. Well, I'm going through a situation. I need to call this person. I need to post it online. I've got to do this. I've got to get advice from that person. I've got to go listen to this sermon. No, you just need to get in the word and find out how God is growing you through this situation. Amen. How am I going to grow in the situation I'm in? Amen. And so really that walking it out uh, really becomes a reality when you grow in your faith. You understand as a Christian what it means to walk something out. How many have ever gone through something and instead of running from the situation, you've learned some things about the Lord that you've got to go through that situation? Amen. I mean, you know, we want to get around the mountain, but the Lord says, nope, you're going to go up and over the mountain. That's how we're going to do this. Amen. When the Lord says we're going to the other side, we're not going to go down. He's not going to drown us, but we're going to go through a storm to get there. And as you're mature in the Lord, as you grow in your faith, you realize that what I'm going through right now, God wants to use to grow me. Grow my faith, grow my marriage, grow my understanding, grow my capacity to trust the Lord, amen, and to rely on Him. And so this is the growing process. And the second thing I've learned is that you grow through relationships. I'm going to hurry along here, but you grow through relationships. I I think there's very little uh, really to no growth that happens in your life without other people. (laughs) How many believe that God blesses you or afflicts you according to people, with people according to your need? (laughs) God will either bless you with people in your life or afflict you with people according to how he's working in your life. Amen. Oh, yeah. And someone was sitting beside him like doing this. Anyways, so, right, God's going to use people. You can't grow in your faith without other people. You grow through relationships. No, I'm, I'm going to live on an island and I'm just going to read my Bible and I'm just going to, oh, I don't, need, I don't need other people. Well, I don't know what you're going to do in heaven if you're going to make it there, but you know, there's going to be a lot of people that you probably didn't like, but are going to show up there. Amen. But they're going to, you're going to grow through relationships. That's God's design as the body of Christ. We have to have one another. We've got to have the community, right? Iron sharpens iron. You grow through relationships. There's that constructive criticism that comes through relationships. There's that teaching and that coaching that comes through other relationships, that instruction that comes through other relationships. Paul said, let the older women in the church instruct the younger women. The older men instruct the younger men. He wasn't kind of giving you a, 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 he was giving you this picture of relationship. That's how it happens. Amen. And so how many believe we grow through relationships? Amen. We're learning, we're following, we're we're being uh, directed to change. And the Lord uses other people. We have to grow through relationships. Let me just throw this out. There's so many people. I like what one of my friends posted a while ago. I'm just going to share a little bit from it. There's people that you need in your life. There's certain people that you need in your life. How many know you need a Paul? You need an authoritative voice who pastors you and prays for you. You need a Jethro, uh, like we see that Moses' father-in-law in the Old Testament, an unexpected voice from the outside who brings clarity, who sees things differently that can help you understand things a little differently. How many know you need a, a Barnabas in your life? You need a peer friendship who will encourage you and pray with you. You need an Eli, like the priest Eli, amen, in the Old Testament, a person who can help you discern the voice of the Lord in your life. You need a Timothy in your life, a disciple you're pouring into and praying for. You need a Goliath in your life, someone who's going to challenge the call of God and challenge the thing, your faith in the Lord. Come on. You need a Titus, a person who's going to bring encouragement in faith in times of need. You need people like this in your life. Amen. You grow through relationship. And the third thing about this is discipleship is a must. Jesus said that we're going to disciple all nations. We've got to be inv- actively involved in discipleship. Teaching and coaching and mentoring and raising up other people. And so the direction or the instruction for grow means these three things. Number one, it means love. We do it out of love. We do it from love. We do it for love. And it means work. 
How many know that's not a, a, a bad word? That's a good word in the Christian faith, work. How many know it needs, takes work? And so it takes work to grow. It takes work to cultivate. It takes work to plant seeds and to water and to watch it work and to harvest. It all takes work. And then it takes relationships. And the third thing I just want to leave with you today about the direction of the Lord and how the Lord directs us. Amen. And, and he says, go. How many have ever heard go, right? How many have ever heard grow? The Lord, Holy Spirit will just speak to you when you're trying to whine about your situation to somebody. And the Lord just says, you need to grow through this. <laughs> You need to just grow up a little bit in this. Amen. But there's a third thing that I've heard God say, and it goes along with the direction of the, really that God leads us to in His way, and that is no. Have you ever heard God say no? I think every Christian needs to hear God say no a couple times in their life. Hello. How many have ever heard the Lord say no? All right. And, it, and a lot of times it's how you handle that no from God. See, what happens is when God speaks no in our lives, it humbles us, which it's a good thing. It's a good humility. And humility will protect you from pride and misdirection. So you're not going to get off course. So you're not going to be led astray. How many know, believe that with all your heart. You need to hear a good solid no from the Holy Ghost every once in a while. Hello, amen, I, I know that people that are young in the ministry or maybe older or whatever, whether it's the giftings of God or talents or whether it's worship, I mean, I've had to tell people, not right now, no. Yes, I mean, I see God doing that in your life, but not right now. How many have had you tell your, 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 your 10-year-old, you can't drive right now? That's a no for me. Come on, right? You have to, tell your little, to say that to the little child who's getting into the cabinet where there's all kinds of, uh, you know, sprays and poison. I mean, all those things, whatever you keep in your house, I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? How many remember those Mr. Yuck st stickers? Well, we don't have those anymore. We just need a parent that says, says, no, you can't do that. Don't go in that drawer. And we need the Lord to tell us no. And so let me just say this, that it's not all yes from God. Even if it's a good thing. I said even if it's a good thing, it's not always yes from the Lord. And you've got to know that as you're growing, walking with the Lord. And if you're going to go God's way, if you're going to do things God's way, you're going to have to hear a good solid no sometimes. You're going to have to hear it's not time. It's not the right mate. It's not the right season. It's not the right house. That's not the time to do that. It's not a good time. Come on, it's not the good time to spend. It's, it, it, no, you're, no. And, and, and I've just, I've, I just kind of argued with the Lord about that. It's like, you know, it's like, Lord, do you want me to do this? And he said, no. And I'm like, let's try that again. Lord, do you want me to do this? No. And we're like, let me call a friend who's going to say yes, right? Come on. Are we all right there? Amen. And so many people think that God, because He blesses us and that He gives you everything you want. That's not God's nature. God's not a dysfunctional Father. He doesn't give you everything you want. He's a good Father. He knows exactly what you need. He sees down the road. He knows what's going to turn your heart. He knows what's going to make you uh, turn away from Him. And so He says, no, <laughs> sometimes. No, you can't do that. No, it's not time. That's not the job. That's not the person for your life. Don't get angry. Don't speak your mind. Don't retaliate. I mean, the Lord's always kind of speaking to us. No, we just need to be able to recognize it's God's voice. So many people have said, well, I heard the devil say no this week. And I say, you sure it wasn't God? Amen. Right? When the devil closed that door. I don't think so. I mean, no, when, when God closed the door, nobody's going to open it. Nobody's going to open it. When God shuts something, when God says no, you're just... You, I mean, you're going to argue for a long, long, long time, but it's still no. And so I believe that as we walk with the Lord, we need to understand God's no. Joseph heard God's no. God, Joseph heard not yet for many, many years. He saw the rejection, the pit, the betrayal, the prison. King Saul, God said, don't spare anyone, and he didn't obey. God said no, right? And he lost his crown. The Apostle Paul, if you find, follow his journey... You realize this, he's going to preach the gospel, doing what God called him to do. And then he said that the Holy Ghost spoke to him and forbid him to go to Asia. The Holy Ghost said, don't go to Asia. I want you to stay right here. And he said, okay, right? What happened? Then he appeared in a vision to the Lord. And there was a, a man from Macedonia, come over and help us. I mean, the Lord said, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit forbid him to go to Asia. Are you kidding me? Why would the Lord forbid me to do something good for him? Because he's got something better in mind. Amen. And so I love that account about Paul and how sensitive he was to the voice of the Lord. You know, 
And one of the things we've got to understand about God's no is it's all in love. It's all in love. The Bible says whoever God loves, He corrects. How many, time, many times we hear the correct part. We hear the discipline part. We hear the chasten. Well, the Lord chasing me, but you didn't hear the love part. Whom the Lord loves, He says no to. Whom the Lord loves, He holds things back from. He keeps you from making dumb decisions and going in places that you shouldn't go or maybe it's going to get you off course or maybe it's going to lead you down a path of temptation and and ultimately you're not going to be able to handle it and the Lord just simply wants to lead you His way and sometimes His way is no, right? Amen. And so it's all done in love. And we've got to, and I, and I love this about the Lord because one of the things about the love of God when He instructs us is He really teaches us you've got to listen to some people around you sometimes. Sometimes you've got to listen to people of those around you. They're going to say, I don't think so. I don't think that's what the Lord is saying. I don't think it's time for you right now. I don't think you need to make that decision right now. Come on sometimes. Even if it's a good thing. I never forget when I was young and just came back from Bible school, so I was so excited. I, I just was praying one morning before church, and I was just, you know, and I was just, I had, had a, just a real, some money in the bank. I was working and stuff, and I'll never forget. I came up and I talked to my mom that morning. I said, I, I, I just feel the Lord saying, I just need to empty my bank account, and I just need to give everything in the offering. She said, well, honey, maybe you just need to just give a little and, and then see where it goes, right? How many know something you need to hear? No. <laughs> From God. Well, maybe that's not God completely. Amen. And how many know you need people in your life to tell you that? Amen. It's not wrong. It's just a no. Amen. And so I believe that um, so many times God's voice, we've talked about this before, sounds like the people around you. God's voice sounds like your boss. <laughs> God's voice sounds like your parents. God's voice sounds like your husband or wife. And so God will speak. And the third thing I want to share lastly about God's word no And that is, it's really about His way, not yours. And so when God says no, it's strictly about His way. And in that moment, when God says no or shuts a door, doesn't say, He says not yet, that's when we need to humble ourselves. See, the Bible says in Psalms 25 that He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble His way. You're never going to learn if you're arrogant. You're never going to see God's way. You're not going to understand God's way. The Bible says His ways are higher than our ways. Does that mean what we never understand? No. It means that He just has a better way of thinking, a different perspective. And so when we begin to humble ourselves, we begin to see God's perspective. How many have ever been in a situation where you humbled yourself, and then months or years later you said, I see God's hand. I see why, I see why God said that now. And so sometimes the Lord has to understand it's about His way and not our way. Amen. And hearing a no, really, from God helps you stay steadfast in your faith. Some people, you know, I, I believe that God just says no sometimes just to do it. How many have ever said that to your child, because I said so? <laughs> you just work that, I mean, I work that button. I mean, I just, I worked that over the years. We just worked that all the time, because I said so. And really what we're saying is, I don't have a good answer, and I don't really feel like dealing with this right now, because I said so. <laughs> right? I don't want you to do it. Why? Because I said so. And how many know the Lord is the same way? Why? Why? Because I said so. And sometimes He just tests your steadfastness, your faithfulness. Will you be faithful? Will you, are you looking for the next yes? Are you looking for the next high? Are you looking for all the blessing, blessing, blessing? Or sometimes you got to realize God's saying a simple no because He's just saying no. Amen. And you know, I believe that God's a good Father. He's going to let you know eventually, this is why I did it. This is why I said that. Amen. And you know, sometimes God doesn't even have to explain himself. He just has, well, all the time. He doesn't have to explain himself. He'll just say no to say no. Amen. But a lot of times he says no in your life so that you won't be easily tripped up and fall into temptation and fall away and be misdirected and misguided. Amen. And sometimes he just says no, don't do that or listen to that or go that way just simply because he knows that if you did that, that it's going to lead to misdirection. And you're not going to go God's way. You're not going to fulfill His will. So how many are thankful for God's no? Amen. Amen. And so if you're praying about something, you need to ask yourself, before you pray about it, can I handle God's no? Can I handle God's not yet? (laughs) Wow. I I don't know about you, but I've, I've had a crash course in that one. Amen. But the direction of no, or the, really when God speaks about no, is this. He means this. It means that we honor Him no matter what. 
It means that we just really love God no matter what and just honor Him. Lord, I'm still going to honor Your Word. I'm going to honor Your principles. I'm just going to honor You, Lord. Some people come to church, you're like, well, you know, the door closed and so I don't feel like worshiping today. And I'm just, you know, it's a good thing I'm here. I mean, I barely made it to church today. We just need to honor God no matter where we're at. No matter what what God says, no matter what God takes us through, we need just to honor the Lord. And so it's about honor. And so it's about honoring God's no and God's closed doors and God's ways that He doesn't take us. Amen. It's about self-denial, isn't it? Carrying your cross, wanting to do your thing, wanting it your way, thinking it should be this way. Lord, I think you should do it this way. I think you need to heal my body right now. I think you need to do it this way. I think you need to do it right now. And this is how I want you to do it. I mean, no, we just need to carry our cross when it comes to God's timing. we got to understand the seasons of life that we're in. And when you understand the seasons of life that you're in, what God has you in going through right now, you'll understand God's go, God's grow, and God's no. I mean, that's just all there is to it. You'll understand the way of the Lord. And I don't know about you today, but I feel like in our culture, in our day, that we need to walk a clear path. That I believe that we need to not be confused about where we're going and what we believe in. We've got to be clear about it. We've got to be direct about it. We've got to be intentional about it. Come on, somebody. Amen. The way we raise our kids, we can't just say we're going to leave them up to society and whatever will be, will be. They'll learn on their own. How many know we're going to teach them God's way? Because God's way is the best. And God's way leads to peace, the Bible says. And it's God's way that leads to God's will. Amen. His blessing, His righteousness, and we want that for your life. Amen? And so we're praying as a leadership team here, Lord, we want to go your way. We want to, Lord, whatever you have for the church and the families in our church and the people in our church, we want to go your way because your way is the best. And your way is not always our way. And your, you know, it's not always yes. Come on. Sometimes it's no. And sometimes it's you just got to grow. And sometimes it's go. And so, Lord, we want to do what you want us to do in this day, in this culture, in this climate, because we want to be the people of God. Amen? Can we stand on our feet today? Amen. You know, I just wrote this down, and I don't even know if this makes sense, but I'm not good at poetry or rap. But really, if you can't, if you can't listen, if you can't listen to go, I've, I've thought about that. What, what if I can't listen to go? What if, what if I want to listen to go? What if, what if I don't? And if, you know, if you can't listen to go, you'll never develop You'll never get past square one. You'll you'll keep going around in circles. Keep finding yourself going back to square one. God will keep bringing you back to this situation, this circumstance, this heart condition that you have. Amen. God will keep doing it because you refuse to go. Because you refuse to change. Because you refuse to respond to what God's doing in your life and what God wants you to do. And I believe that there's some situations that we're just waiting for God's go. But there's other situations that, man, Lord, your go is tough on this one. I, I don't know if I really want to walk through this. I don't know if I want to go right now. Amen. Like Moses, I don't know if I want to go back. Amen. I don't know if I want to do this. But how many know the Lord's with us when we go? The Lord promises that I'm going to give you strength and I'm going to give you courage and I'm going to give you the power to be able to go and do what I want you to do. And if you can't listen to grow, you'll, you'll deteriorate and you'll die in your faith. You just, you just won't grow anymore. And you'll, you know, how many know that anything that doesn't grow and has life eventually just dies and just dies off? And then you'll be a shadow of what something once was. And you'll have this form of religion, but you won't have the power, you won't have the life. You'll have this form, but no, as the Bible says, there's just no power there. Amen. And you'll have this form of religion and Christianity, but there's no relationship there. There's no life there. There's no real, you know, growth happening in your family, in your life, in your heart, because you refuse to grow. Before, because you refuse to look at your circumstances instead of running away. Instead of, you know, you, you, you know this is what we need to do. We, instead of running away, we just need to say, Lord, what I'm going through is going to grow me. And so I'm going to... I'm going to stay in this boat. I'm going to stay in the storm because you promised that I'll go to the other side because you promised to be with me because you promised that I put my trust in you that, Lord, all things work together for the good of those that love you and are called according to your purpose. Amen. And so I believe that if you can't listen to no, you'll never handle grow. You'll never be able to handle that. You'll never be able to handle blessing from the Lord because you can't handle a no. I mean, no, it's healthy to hear a no sometimes. So I don't know what you're praying about, what you're going through. But I want to just just leave this with you today. Just have that desire above everything else. I want to go God's way. And the Bible says that my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I don't know about you, but I want 
I want to follow the Lord. Amen. I want to lead my family in the direction of God. I want to lead your, like your business or whatever. I want to lead this generation in the direction of God. So I've got to hear His voice. I've got to go His way. Amen. Come on, we're coming up against some real tough decisions in the future as Christians, as believers. And, and I don't believe it's, it's going to get easier in, in a lot of sense, in a lot of ways. But I do believe that we can become stronger. And I believe that the church and the people of God are going to get more, more strength in their heart. Come on, in their spirit, that Lord, we're going to go your way. We're going to stand on your word because your way is the best. And it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing around us. It doesn't matter what our culture says or what anything else is going on. But your way is the best. And we're going to stand on your way. We're going to go your way. We're going to raise our kids in the way of the Lord. We're going to, we're going to live our lives in the way of God. We're going to make our decisions in the way of God because his way is always the best way, amen? What's up fam, this is Michael. Thank you for joining us. If you love what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button, the subscribe button, then the bell notification with all the notifications on so that you can be informed on every time we post new content. If the Lord's placed it on your heart to give, you'll find that link down in the description below. Don't forget to follow us on all of our other social media platforms so that you can be up to date on everything we're doing here at River Valley Church. Most of all, if you need someone to stand with you in prayer, click the link to our website. You'll find contact information. We want to get you in contact with prayer warriors who are going to stand with you in your time of need. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you next time. God bless.